I uh, went into the hospital or the emergency room in June, the first of June. I thought I had an abscess tooth and a wisdom tooth. And when they checked me, it wasn't my teeth. I had a, it was lymph node. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay. And it's basically called CLL. They told me, you know, I had cancer then and uh, went ahead and admitted me in the hospital. They was trying to find where the infection was coming from. Yeah. And they told us, you know, he didn't have an infection coming from his teeth at all. Yeah. That he had cancer. Uh, like I said, I can't remember most of this because by the time they took this out of my neck, everything was pretty much a blank after that. They started the chemo. They told us how they would proceed, and we was thinking we would be in the hospital for a week. We was in the hospital for 45 days. And he kept progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And he was in the ICU at one point because he was coughing up just, you know, buckets of blood. And he was diagnosed at that time with regular pneumonia. Then two weeks, around two weeks before we was released from the hospital, we was told that it was fungal pneumonia. And he had a mass in his lung the size of his fist. I was kind of wondering, well, how did he get this? You know, he didn't come in with it, and he's been in the hospital for this many days. You know, how did he end up with it? So you just kind of basically start, you know, looking for answers, you know, but <laughs> really couldn't find anything. And then we uh, leave the hospital, and he's still getting worse. All of his cancer, when, once they put him on the antifungals, his blood work for the cancer it done really well. Um, he's on a medicine now that costs $9,000 a month, which is Sanska. And it's because the infection got so bad it messed his pituitary gland up, which called syndrome of anti, no, let's see. In, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. That's a mouthful. But he'll have to be on this medicine the rest of his life. And luckily, we applied for a program to where we could get the medicine free or you know we wouldn't be able to afford it at all. Then from there after we left the hospital with all of his blood work getting better and all of his uh, his lungs were clearing up he was still getting sicker. He was going Plus, I was in a lot of pain. But then we go to ECM hospital because he had a seizure. We called an ambulance out here and he had a seizure and we went there and they more or less gave him some pain medicine and sent him home. A day and a half later, we go to Helen Keller Hospital and they admit him and tell him that he has fungal meningitis. But I questioned the doctor and, and all she kept telling me is, no, it's fungal meningitis. Well, the day that we was told that, the next morning is when it broke over the news. I had him transferred to St. Thomas Hospital. They, over the course, of a few days, raised his platelets back up and safely done the test. The, the antifungals are very, very strong. They, he didn't have a swollen liver before this that we know of, but when we got to St. Thomas, his liver was swollen. And plus he's got the swollen spleen and we're doing radiation for that now. So it's just, you know, when we got to St. Thomas, um, they done the the spinal tap on him, and of course it came back negative. It had, I think, a white blood cell count of two and elevated proteins that showed some kind of a central nervous system infection, but we won't really ever know for certain if that's what, you know, it was. Even though we was t told, but there's a lot of people that is coming back with negative spinal taps that, that you know, from what I'm reading, some of the ones that sicker are coming back with negative spinal taps and some of the ones that's not as sick is coming back and their spinal taps are showing up, you know, severely elevated. And then the bone marrow tests come back 90% yeah. cancer. When they had me in remission here, when I go up there they do a bone marrow test, which they never did down here come back 90 percent they you know cancerous and they wanted me to go ahead and start treatment that it was a um, you know a half to thing I had to get treatment and they was telling us watch and wait mode so yeah down know, here they're saying watch and wait I don't believe the doctors 
I'm not saying that they're not qualified. I, I don't believe that they've had enough experience with this to, you know, when all this happened and everybody was doing it, if it was like our doctors was kind of, didn't know. They just don't know. But the, the meningitis, I would hate to see anybody go through that because he, uh, I didn't think he was gonna make it. I look rough, I got some pictures and you wouldn't believe. I lost, uh, how many pounds? From 206 down to 153. You're quick. From the letter that we've got, and I read it to the, the district health department, and she seems to think, like me, that he was administered three different medicines. One of them was potassium chloride. The other, <laughs> excuse me, was Tordol. And then LASIK, I believe, was the third one. The, the first hospital where he was administered the NEC drugs did not contact the health department about his infection. Even though they were told by the CDC and the FDA to, if, if you have gave somebody an injectable product and they, something comes along with anything fungal or any kind of symptoms, you know, turn it in. And if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't have been turned in at all. I filled out the 3500 form. I called the FDA, I called the CDC, I called the Alabama Department of Public Health, and I called our local health department. And, and they didn't know about it. Which hospital was that? Eliza Memorial Coffee Hospital. And uh, I was also told and by his cancer doctors, uh, was a receptionist or secretary in the front. Um, she couldn't believe that Brett, this was like right after we got out of the hospital, she couldn't believe that he was there because they was faxing so much stuff over from the hospital to there. You know, she said, well, did they ever figure out what was wrong with him? And I told her fungal pneumonia. She said, you know, that's really weird. That's the second fungal infection we've had from ECM. Well, I wonder if that one's been turned in, you know. But if you say something to someone about it, all I get is, well, they shouldn't have told you that. Why not? You know, I mean, it is kind of odd. This is something that's very rare. It's not something that you see every day. So, yeah, I think it should be turned in. I think there might be more people out there that possibly could have stuff going on that they don't know, you know, that it could have been an NEC medicine that caused it.